across I'm the internet. Not bailing but... you out of violent jail again. <laughs> 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 ah, thank you so much. I'll kill you, you son of a. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. Sure, of course, the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we're going to be talking about NVIDIA and what they've done. They've enabled free sync on Linux before AMD question mark. That's the thing. And the top 50 Left 4 Dead 2 custom cam pagans. They've been ranked. And one of them we found out is just a little bit random. Next Metro game won't be so epic because they're going to be epic exclusive. And Ultima Online will never die. The nerds just won't let it. Valve is cooking again. Rumor has it they have servers. Who do? And Unity, the game engine, is improving Linux support by lessening Linux support. Stay tuned to see what that means. OMG WTF BBQ. <laughs> We're back again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of old men. Ben, that is uh, Jordan Sphing and on the man on the island. One page room and together with you. You're down there hanging out in the Discord, forming. Well, that's chat room dynamic. If you don't know him, you gotta love him. But they are helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Deal with that. Um, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Who's going to be the lady? Pleasure. I will be the lady. Damn I'm it. a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. Oh, fine. Um, <laughs> uh, no, Appreciate just, it, I'm, hey, I'm an expensive hooker. Leave me alone. <laughs> you can't. You can't afford me, sweetheart. Um, yeah, no. I've I've just been doing more more job interviews. Got a stage two this week. Got a stage two on Monday. Hopefully, hopefully this job hunt will be over very, very soon because I am turning into a troglodyte like an actual <laughs> lizard person who just ejects stink spray. You can, you can find me on page 300 of the monster manual. Amen. That's the thing. What's up? Yeah, why bathe when you don't need to get out of the house? I've been there. I spent like a year and a half doing that. Uh... <laughs> and yet Nori's still with you. Maybe she doesn't have a yeah. sense of smell. I but... know where to go. <laughs> Yeah, no, over here, I actually spent uh, most of the week doing, like, really weird stuff with the Steam box. I took it apart. Oh, I removed it, some of those teeny tiny there. little fans that were really loud. It's really quiet now. Like, really, really quiet. Why didn't you it's just, like, like, shove some, like, foam into the blades? That'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Why even have the fans at that point? Hey, man, listen, I get results. My methodology is not to be questioned. <laughs> But yeah, no, the Steam box is now, it's running uh, Linux kernel 5.0 RC4. I think that was the latest one available on the Fedora vanilla repos. And yeah, uh, it it's really quiet now. It's really awesome. So yeah, <laughs> that was my week. <laughs> I've been doing a whole lot of playing around with FFmpeg and uh, NV Encode and CUDA and having to build KDN Live from source and... Yeah. Also, I beat Hellblade. Uh, the game ran very well uh, with Proton. Not a problem with it. Only had, like, I think two spite crashes. No complaints there. Uh, not a bad experience until I got to the end. That that credit music is fucking insulting, Ninja Theory. <laughs> that is wrong, man. I'm a poppy girl in the poppy You know, world. listen... Girlfriend, Might I would have well got up and like that. danced. I would have been happy with that. I don't know what's going on with that. Also, I'm having problems trying to envision what's going on with the horse. I mean, the the, the horse has oddly just stayed stagnant for the past couple weeks. Um, looks like there's no real growths or shrinkage because it's the steam. Stop I love the that, hey, check yep. out. I remember to cut We're off. We're still the not point eighty two percent. No man, I remember uh, yeah. to cut off reverb so I don't have to go through editing hell tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, team Ben. And I <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, the uh, latest uh, hardware survey from Steam is out, and Linux is staying very much at the not point eighty two percent. No change there. Some more people are now using uh, eighteen oh four point one LTS. And a few uh, less people are using 16.04.5 LTS. Oh, that's about it. Uh, there was a slight decrease in NVIDIA 1060 usage with the NVIDIA 1050 Ti actually climbing up the ranks slightly, but the 1060 is still by far the most popular video card. Okay, all right. What's your guess? What's the short bus video card? 
uh, hey, uh, I mean, Vega. the Intel HD 4000 is still pretty high up on the list. <laughs> RX Vega, not point one six <laughs> under the GT 440. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, Actually, that's a bit of a slap. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's a uh, it's really non news if we're being honest because yeah, we're still exactly where we were. So I guess that proton bump is over now. Maybe, maybe. I don't I don't know. It may just be that it it, it may just be that like we're we're just our growth is on parity because it, again it has to do with total number of Linux users or total yes. number of users, right? So yeah, um, we we, we could be making is, small gains. I don't I don't know. We, again, these numbers are bullshit. They don't actually mean anything. Valve has the real yep. numbers. These are imaginary happy fun pretend numbers, but we get to obsess over them every month. And yeah, I mean there was a slight decline in Mac usage. I you know if you really want to feel bad for someone, feel bad for people that have like bought balls deep into the Mac ecosystem because they're not ever going to get another computer that can game. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, 2020. Uh, Apple's rolling out their own architecture, so you got that to look forward to. <laughs> hey man, mobile gaming on the desktop is the new future. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. There's been a... Yeah, game so... Co- oh, never mind. I, uh, oh, do, do you want my story, sweetheart? Or do you want me to take another <laughs> stab at it? Go ahead. All right. Um, a new Steam client. It's out. And basically, this is a lot of the beta stuff that's been rolled out into the stable client. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, they've added new t- you, new tills. Yeah, right. You're never going to get that right. <laughs> Steam runtime. That's going to fix some of your network connectivity. They fixed some IPv6 business. That's also in there. And the dreaded Zbyte download that if you've had a lot of Steam Play titles up and running, you had every single mothering time you launched and it got your hopes up that something was really getting updated when it was uh huh no <laughs> oh, wah, wah. i mean i mean this again this is just sort of folding in the stuff that was in the beta previously into the into the main client so mm-hmm. it's good to see that all that stuff has been stabilized which is good for people like myself who have a steam box who does, who is not um running the beta client on said steam box uh because yeah that means i get well i don't have to deal with all the zero byte downloads on uh, steam big picture mode which are even more annoying than the regular client so good on them does, does big picture <laughs> mode have a file browser yet <laughs> no <laughs> No. Give it time, man. <laughs> Give it time. I can definitely see that coming. Uh, so this is something we got to talk about, Jordan, because yes. it. You know, I think we all had hopes that maybe we were going to get a chance to play it, but said hopes have been dashed while being pissed upon simultaneously. Yeah, m- m- much like much like so many boats falling victim to the siren songs of the uh, sirens in the Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, uh, Metro Exodus is becoming a Epic Store exclusive, which means that that oh, wonderful so. page on the Steam Store uh, is no longer really applicable. Um, they were they were offering pre-orders too on Steam. Fortunately, these guys are doing the bare minimum and will actually let you play the game that you purchased on Steam. Uh, without having to go over to the Epic Store, but I mean, th- th- this 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 is the big thing, right? Like, uh, the Metro series has historically had fairly good Linux support, and th- th- this 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 sort of this uh, behavior in, in terms of switching stores exacerbates a lot of the timing related uh, Linux lo- lo- uh, woes because waiting for a port is bad enough, and then on top of that, waiting for a store that will actually support our platform to sell it is an entire other bag of dicks entirely. And yeah, a lot, a lot of people aren't going to be willing to put up with it. Although it could, that, that said, maybe, maybe the steam sales for Exodus will be a hundred percent Linux. Maybe unicorns <laughs> will fly out of my butt and give me $500 cash. <laughs> maybe we won't even get an Eon port because that's what deep silver has been doing lately. Um, oh man, that is kind of a terrifying yeah. thing. I agree with you 100% uh, with a sentiment of dicks. And, you know, Valve, for the most part, agrees. They're like, dicks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 100%. And, you know, can you imagine how fast, like, Exodus would be back on Steam if Valve just walked out and they're like, you know what? We're not going to release anything you make again ever. And Empty and Shatron pointed out, this is only going to be an exclusive until 2020. 
which yeah, all the, all the all the Epic Store exclusives have that year rider on them. And One of the things available. I don't really see being mentioned is like you, everyone might not know this, but the head of Epic Store, the new guy, is the same one that drove like ran Telltale into the fucking ground, man. Mm. Yep. <laughs> well, so so um, th there's all, there's also like I've, I've noticed a lot of sentiment that people are fairly anti Epic Store these days. Um, it, it was a move that was very popular with the, the developers because they get more of a cut. But you know, mm -hmm. Steam actually does qu provides quite a bit of value add to their thirty percent. Yeah. And here's the thing: the only thing that the Epic Store has above Steam and really any of the other ones is the developer uh, front. It's okay. So the developers have to give you a lower cut instead of thirty percent. They only have to give you like ten percent or twelve percent or whatever the fuck they're charging. I think, I think it was twelve for Epic and ten for Discord or something. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and it's like okay, uh, so you're targeting the developers. That's cool. Who exactly are you going to be selling those? games to because the users as far as they're concerned steam provides a hell of a lot more functionality than the epic store does right now well steam also does crazy things like regional pricing which is also bought a lot of people listen i personally up until this point i'm like you know hey if a developer's working on a game and they decide hey we're just going to put it on the epic store that's fine i'm not happy about it but when you were taking pre-orders on steam and getting the marketing machine that is steam going boom 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 then yoink mm -hmm. fuck both y'all fuck epic yeah and fuck no that Solar. is a dick like, move and stereo. valve yeah valve uh no, no. specifically says Try like force hang on help me out <laughs> there we go <laughs> a spirit bird Come on. <laughs> but yeah v valve specifically said it's like this is unfair to the people who are actually playing money you know the players and then kataku went off it's like oh valve is trying to pass on their propaganda by saying it's unfair is it what the hell what kind of media are you <laughs> well, side that's you the thing. Fair, fair, fairness doesn't have anything to do with it it's the it's the fact that um the the uh, a cons consumers want the value add that steam provides they don't want another freaking game installer client between yeah. lutris and the epic store and the discord store and steam mm -hmm. and origin and you play and I don't know. I, I feel that this move really bought Epic bad will across the board. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean lo, lo and behold, they could turn it around. And one, one, once it gets into the year, the Epic Store will have Linux support and do all sorts of wonderful things. But they haven't been saying anything. And so we're yeah. left high and dry. I don't As know. It turns I, I, just, out... I have to imagine there's better uses for that bukus of Fortnite money than to do something that's just <laughs> assholish. That's the thing. They have tons of Fortnite money so they can buy everyone into like timed exclusives on freaking PC. No, You're dude, introducing exclusives Here, on PC. Here's, here's <laughs> the silver uh, plated lining around this. After seeing the fallout from this, no one else is going to do this, even if that money <laughs> truck backs up. Now, some of them you will if they desperately need it. But anybody who's not about to like run out of the money foods, they're gonna go. No, we we don't need that backlash. L mm -hmm. l l listen, man, I I I will I will I will take that bet. People are dumb, and businesses are a special kind of dumb. But then again, you also have Bethesda releasing their own, and the only game available there right now is Fallout seventy six. Mm. That is shit. So yeah, <laughs> see, I, I, I was kind of hoping for the Bethesda store. I was kind of <laughs> hoping for the Bethesda store with like ninety six billion different versions of Skyrim. I don't know. <laughs> There, there was a uh, store in uh, Deutschland. They, they straight up were giving you a free copy of Fallout 76. Games, uh, that, that was GameSpot, yeah. If, if I finished the sentence. <laughs> and with a used PS2 controller. Mm -hmm. Or it might have been a PS4. Used. Yeah, uh, used DualShock and you get Fallout 76 for free. Yeah, yeah. it was GameSpot. <laughs> Ladies and Man, gentlemen, one thing that we got a chance to play around with on Tuesday because I opened my big monkey mouth last week and said, hey, let's, I, I'll help was pedro and yeah, we played yeah, left for did. dead and we went through the entire campaign on hard so i was like what's up next we need a campaign uh so i went digging around and i found this the top 50 left for dead to custom campaigns and it's just ranked down so after careful consideration and i picked the first one uh, <laughs> fallen death is what we ended up playing which kind of threw us for a curveball go back and watch that video you can go because we walked in with a bit of swagger going 
we beat Left 4 Dead 2 on hard. We got this. This, <laughs> this campaign was like, no, the fuck you don't. Sit down. Mm-hmm. We, we actually had to back it off hard back to, uh, please, please, baby, don't hurt me. Movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, Fallen Death was a fairly accurate descriptor of what we were doing throughout that entire playthrough. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I mean, it's it's nice that all of this is being curated. I kind of wish that Steam had this sort of functionality built in. Maybe that's the thing that they're going to do later on if they're listening to this high game, high game pass, pass go and give me five bucks. Um, also, yeah, um, at least it means we have a lot more Brad left in us when the time comes on easy mode. Yeah, Possibly apparently. Easy, but, uh, I really enjoyed that campaign for the simple fact that it did something that I'd never seen done with a Left 4 Dead campaign was RNG by like switching the map up on us. Mm-hmm. There are some of the maps in the Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns that they will have like a different door or a different hallway that you have to go down to progress in the level, but it was very minimal. In this one, it's like entire fucking sections of the map are blocked off and you go, okay, so how the fuck do I progress? Actually, also, I was also- playing I was playing single player uh, earlier yesterday and it's like... Okay, so where do I progress? Because single player, the game is actually piss easy. So where do I go? Where do I go? And I realized, oh, I have to break that window and then do like the little jump trick to get into the window. And then I keep keep progressing. It's like, oh, so it's not so, 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 like, so, so, you know, that's, that's linear. I was just going to say that certain parts <laughs> of the maps are, are blocked off. And then other times we're just too stupid to realize that they I, are that's open. That's exactly and what I was about to bring direction. up then. Because, yeah, I went back when I was editing the video. It was like, oh. Okay, we just caused ourselves 15 minutes of pain because we were being dumb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we got it into our head that that was the correct answer when clearly it wasn't. Yep. Uh, hey, Valve is working on a thing for multiplaying game. You know, the f- yes. fun type of games that multiple people can play. Mm-hmm. That no and makes- in the, you know, if you consider that there are tons of multiplayer only games on Steam right now, it's probably a good idea to want to cater to those developers, especially since there are other stores out there offering to sell your games for a lesser cut. So in order to add to that uh, particular value, Valve have decided, well, they haven't officially announced anything, but according to some changes that happened in the uh, Steam depots that, of course, SteamDB is always listening, uh, PC Games then actually picked up on the story and said, yeah, there's a newly discovered bit of developer documentation that suggests that Valve is introducing uh, dedicated servers for non-Valve games. Integrating Steamworks, basically, into something that Valve didn't develop and allowing those third-party developers to have their own dedicated servers which are being hosted by Valve directly. Yeah, I figured since you're already paying 30% uh, of each and every single sale to Valve, you might as well get some value uh, value add out of that. Mm. And I guess that's what Valve is doing. <laughs> it, it, it's true. They're, they were talking about that in that blog post that we covered either, either last or the week before. Yeah, um, where they were where they were talking about how they've been setting up a, a essentially a massive global VPN that they've been mm-hmm. hosting their own game servers on and their Steam streaming servers on, and they were going to be giving uh, people access to it. So it looks like um, this is going to be coming down the pipe very soon. The big the big advantage here is the DDoS protection because these servers yep. aren't usually accessible via the public internet, uh, just via the Steam API and the encrypt the encrypted tunnel there. So. Yep. Um, also, also just having a bunch of Steam servers backing it up. It's it's like it's like it's sort of like what the what the proposition for Lumberyard was, where you could like have AWS backing up your game. Oh, there's is, a like, name I is... haven't heard in many ages. <laughs> Lumberyard, yeah, <laughs> right. remember that? Hey, Resident yeah. Evil Seven, zombies and shit. Yeah, uh, Biohazard, uh, Resident Evil Seven, uh, or Bio Seven Hazard, Resident whatever. I I, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's Re- Re- Resident Evil Seven. Uh, they removed uh, Denuvo, the uh, anti the DRM thing from the game, so now you can play it in Proton. Wow, wow. That's, no, that's, you can. I, 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 <laughs> no, you're a, lot, you're a fibber. You're a big fibber. Am I? Yep. All right. What 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 makes you believe that you could actually play in Proton? Uh, well, because Proton's most, the most, thing mostly the removal of is not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I put in the show notes for these two monsters that didn't try the demo was uh-huh. it launches now. Didn't say mm. you could play it. You can get to the title screen, then it kind of loads to a screen of uh, perpetual darkness. 
but that's mm. progress so keep your eye it, on that it is i i checked out the pc version of that i'm a little sad that all the vr stuff was ps very exclusive exclusive because some of the resident evil stuff uh for vr looked really like legit spooky so mm. Well, you know, and, my favorite thing in the world will be um, having terrifying moments surrounded by cords. Yeah, then, then you strangle yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. the real horror. Survival horror. Hard mode. All right. Well, you know, I'm keeping an eye on that. I just got a demo and I've watched, you know, all the internets playing that. It's like, eh, maybe. Might be fun. Pew, pew, some zombies. All right. Game updates. Tower time. All right, so uh, Tower of Time, you may remember it. We threw chairs at it a while back, and it was a game that got a thoroughly meh score across the board when it came to the fun. And now they have decided, you know what? People seem to be dropping the game a little bit, so let's give them a reason to come back. And they've introduced uh, three new game modes. Not one, not two, three whole new game modes. And it's, it's still the same game, but you get different rules with each and every single one. You have CRPG mode for, you know, if you're a fan of the old CRPGs like your Fallout 2s and your Baldur's Gates and your Icewind Dales, you can they, have They that. liken it to Darkest Dungeon, though, which is a bad comparison. I don't yeah, know that you town really shot looked don't a whole lot like Darkest Dungeon, that. man. That, 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 that is true. That is true. <laughs> Uh, they also have RPG Lite, which is if you're really not into the whole RPG thing, you can just completely forget about those elements and just play the game as it is, which basically turns it into a very weird uh, hack and slash. And you have permadeath for your roguelike fans out there. Oh, so, finally! Now we'll go back and play it. I love it. <laughs> you know, well, so again, so, for a game that got a thoroughly mess core when we threw chairs at it, this is a very good thing because they're actually giving you new reasons to play the game and if you thought that the mechanics weren't particularly interesting in the first time around maybe now is the time to go back and check yeah. honestly I, I honestly wasn't a fan of the whole um overworld exploration cut to the sort of rts type thing uh, I, I i just didn't like that in terms of an rpg thing um yeah. but i mean they're, they're they're at least they're at least trying they added a turn-based mode so mm -hmm. that might make it a little better question mark i, I don't know <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the uh, this crew they added a experimental Vulcan support to this at one point, didn't they? Was it this one? Hey, I thought it was this one. It was the one that looked frighteningly like this. I don't. Know. I don't remember. I don't remember. You might want to go check it out. New game yeah. modes is currently twenty four ninety nine. It's single player and it is mixed. Recent reviews of 44. Yeah, it, it, it got a two chair on the chair position. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, take, it was take, a Take mess. that with your uh, appropriately sized grain of salt. But hey, single player. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. Unruly heroes. Uh, they describe it as madcap action, martial arts, monkey king, and more. And you know what? I like Journey to the West. I'm a fan of the Dragon Ball and the sort of inspiration behind that. Um, and they made themselves a fun little beat em up uh, platformer uh, regarding this um, that you can pick up for about 25 Canadian. The one problem here is that they failed the litmus test. They, they mm -hmm. forgot to go down the checklist of, do I want my game to have multiplayer? Good, it should have online multiplayer because this is single player only and so we will not touch it, period. Hmm. Well, this one or is not, not single, single player. Local, local multiplayer. Local, yeah, it's a uh, local which, which, which is effectively single player. None of us have friends. Screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like the idea of it. It looks neat. I like the animation. Um, yeah, you know, I like a good beat 'em up. And, yeah, and, 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 and Journey Journey to the West is like a great thing to mine for games. Like there's there's all sorts of fun stuff you could do with it. But yeah. but it would be more fun with other people. That, well, no, I completely agree with you with that. Um, they they basically said, you know what, multiplayer is hard, yo. <laughs> So, yep. yeah, which is a shame because, yeah, looking at the trailer, it's like, oh, that looks like it's got a bit of the uh, guacamole going for it. So, yeah, I would be very interested in actually getting to play it, but yeah. I'd be playing it alone because yeah, no it kind of like gives me kind of gives me a kind of gives me a bit of a Trident vibe, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it does work with uh, they say it works with Linux, but it's not listed on the page. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Wah wah. Indeed. <laughs> hey, something we know 
that doesn't just show up on Steam saying it works with Linux and doesn't by the time we uh, get around to talking about it later <laughs> in the week. Uh, sunless Not Skies. Sunless Skies. Yeah, well, this, this one is actually Sunless Skies. Uh, previously, we had Sunless Seas, and we... Uh, well, we threw chairs at it, and it was it was basically not what any of us expected. But Good. it certainly looks, uh, yeah, uh, it certainly looks like a sunless uh, title because it's got the exact same view, it's got the exact same graphics. You're it just expected to believe, yeah, you're expected to believe that you're actually flying an airship rather than sailing a boat. Whatever uh, the case may be, though, it still has a lot of text on screen from the screenshots and the actual uh, gameplay title. So, yeah, it's got the same combat. It's got the same animations. It's got the same graphics. It's... To, to yeah, be fair, the graphics look really good. good. Don't yeah, they, totally. they look good, uh, but it, yeah, it's more sunless text on screen. That, it's you know, gonna, that, 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 that part I didn't mind so much. It's just the slow <laughs> crawl of progression where you have to like find a gas station or else you're just haul you you go a little bit out and then you haul your ass back so you could refuel. That was that was the one big thing that kind of killed it for me. I'd actually be interested in trying this out. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a stream of this. Uh just because I really like your style. Worth it. Um <laughs> yeah. And All right, that's the end of that. <laughs> that that that's it. We end on awkward silence as we are often <laughs> want to do. Coming up next, I explain how FreeSync works, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how FreeSync works. Pedro, Science. do you know how FreeSync works? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, strap yourselves down, because we're about to thank you violently. Well, I mean, we can't really reach across the screen and slap say, you man, across I'm the internet. I'm not bailing but... you out of violent jail again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll kill you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Thank don't you. accept my gratitude. You're awesome. You will die. <laughs> no. And if, if if you don't want to die from my angry, angry hands, you can head on over to LinuxGameCast.com and click the support button, uh, where we got all sorts of fun links that you can click on to get support us. Amazon affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links, Humble Partner links if you want to donate some money to charity while you give us some stuff um you can even give us some uh, paypal love or some uh, bitcoin cash if PayPal you're so love. inclined how much how much bitcoin do we have these days Ben? <laughs> that much i don't know <laughs> all right well <laughs> for all, man <laughs> listen for all i know these beautiful psychopaths out there we are like multi-millionaires because i haven't checked that in a while <laughs> right I, I mean if cryptocurrency is not your jam you can still head, of, head on over to patreon.com slash linux gamecast where you get some fun benefits for being a patron of us like what like what could i possibly what, what could we possibly give them in return for uh supporting our nonsense bullshit uh, well at the very least we can bullshit we, we can deliver i do not feel yeah. bad saying that that's something i feel that we can deliver m m <laughs> money money for bullshit well you can at least get access to our discord <laughs> channel which is a lot more active than most other discord channels out there on right. the internet so if you yeah. are lonely and want someone to talk to become a patreon and Built you'll make some friendship. new friends uh you get some show note access uh if you're uh, doing 250 or above a week i uh, get your name in the credits um access to uncut vods hey, if you're doing 250 and above a week you get to hang out in the pre pre super shows and like a bunch of this these fine fine young cannibals did oh. and they still do it's, that's kind of it, it, that's true. become a thing man it has so sometimes though it goes into the pre pre super show or into the pre super shows and or even into the proper show proper <laughs> so it's a thing that happens and it you know if you give happened. us enough money you can you can just you can show up here next to us and then we'll make fun of you but you paid for it so you know what you're getting it um we got we got we got uh, we got some other ways to support us but first we got to thank we got to thank uh three people gonzo 2000 ladies um, patron or, yeah, yes. so this is Patreon. And uh, Yishan is back. Yeah. Yishan um, has returned from the dead as a, a returning patron. I, he mainly does it so he can keep an eye on uh, Strider. That's pr indeed. pretty much it. Um, yep. Yeah, um, but, you know, we, 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 got a, we got other ways to support us. Maybe, maybe you want to kit yourself out in some lovely oh. Linux Gamecast gear and show people of the world that you, too, are a lonely nerd who needs to give money to a patreon to have friends in discord um you can you can head on over to our store why do you say it shirts. like it's a bad thing i mean people pay for far worse this is true this yeah. is 100 true and on, on the you know, list of uh, shameful if, things i pay for this would only be like number four yeah <laughs> and and of course if you if you want to get in with the skeleton man himself mr frank you can you can send us some stuff via our amazon wish list uh we got we got some stuff there don't we what do you mean i don't i don't, I don't know from rule spider uh, yeah, games? that was some games. Sent some video games. What, he didn't send you a video game? 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> you you didn't get a like an item in a gift on Steam? Um He has no, no. idea. He doesn't check shit like this, so he probably did. Thank you, Rule Spider. Um No, I did not did. <laughs> well, Why do you hate me so much, Rule Spider? I love you. <laughs> wah, wah. Hey. Thanks for supporting us, and let's keep on rocking and rolling with that. That's kind of an interesting experiment. Maybe one day we will build that alpha site. That's one thing we're going to work up to. Every time mm-hmm. we crunch the numbers, I think, oh, shit. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but we're like $800 away to actually having an open studio to bring people in. <laughs> That'd be live shows. We'd have to fly out at least once a month. I'd have to fly these two yahoos. Oh, and... boy. Oh, that's going to be a sizable expense to fly me out there. Not really. I'm going <laughs> to no, put you on a we're... boat. <laughs> oh, no, we're just gonna we're just gonna have sock puppet Pedro. <laughs> Taking a week to get sock- there. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just we're gonna need an arm, Pedro. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you're, you're you're good. You're good one though. Um. Anyways, we we, well, we, we got some. Sock we got some... Sock yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, sh- sh- shilling time is finished. We got right. we got some news now, so we can shell for some other companies. Hey, yeah, you know us, man. Uh, nothing about us says uh, shill like. NVIDIA, unless we're talking bad about them. Stay tuned for that. New drivers, and it's the drivers that you were waiting for, unlike the yes. last one. So this is adding uh, initial support for G-Sync compatible FreeSync monitors. See the readme. There's a checkbox. Um, support for stereo presentation in Vulcan. Fuck all what that is. Uh, they fixed a bug with the application of the VT switches and all that. NVIDIA, uh, the SDK has been bumped up to 9.0 on the video codec it's we got some new stuff for nv decode nv encode and some cuda hotness that's where i was like keep going girlfriend uh <laughs> they did add the nv encode black magic bucky bits which mm-hmm. in effectively is going to give you almost no hit uh performance when you're using your nvidia card to like stream a game or record a game with the nv encoder it's dedicated silicon on there Previously, it had to go out, like each frame had to go out to system RAM, then come back for the encode. So that's why you'd see like a 10 to 15% uh, performance piddling. Nothing like if you were doing it with CPU. Now it can do it all on the card, as long as it's on that same card. And you're only going to be seeing, especially with like Turing hardware, like maybe a 3% performance penalty. So even using OBS, you effectively have shadow play. That's kind of brilliant. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I put that business on there. Now, what I said at the beginning, because I know somebody might be fast forward, you're like, oh, oh AMD had FreeSync and working on Linux. Like, yeah, with like, the binary drivers only over DisplayPort, that's kind of a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. This works with HDMI and everything else. I know Pedro's tried it. I know Jordan's tried it. I'm not cool enough to have a FreeSync monitor yet, but uh, uh-huh. I know. What, what? If you're on the Ubuntu. Uh, I'm on 1804, but even if in your 1810, hurry up and wait because, you know, this is not like back in the day when Xorg Edgers uh, did the graphics drivers and they showed up a few minutes afterwards. Now it's run by volunteers for Canonical, so it may or may not show up. Eventually, you can manually force that hot shit in there. I did it. I know what I'm doing, and I don't <clears> recommend <throat> you do play. Uh-uh. Don't do that home game unless you're brave. If you know how to unfuck things, go for it. So, I mean, yeah. I, spe- speaking of fucking mm-hmm. with things, I, f- I fucked around a bit with the uh, FreeSync stuff this week. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it definitely works. I, I, I was a little afraid that when I clicked that tick box and followed by the apply that this this, this monitor over here would go all like fucky. But no, it, it worked. I, I, I fucked around with uh, Doom and Shadow Warrior. Doom is a little crashy on these drivers. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just a proton problem or a driver problem. Uh, and it definitely looks good on Shadow Warrior, too. Uh, Ven, Ven, you're asking me before, like what what it actually looks like, and it's just like when when the frame rate drops, it's less obvious. It just tends yeah. to be a little more smoother. But it actually still nice. you see it as slightly slower, but it's like the difference in frame timing is so little that your brain can't even see it. Yeah, I, you, on the you, other hand, am still waiting for the Solus uh, repos to go. Yeah, there you go, because it is on the testing repos, it is there, but my system is actually working really well right now, I don't want to touch it, he says, as he's just about to crash, tempting fate. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and then his internet died, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Wow, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but uh, it works. Um, I guess NVIDIA I guess Nvidia will be at some point soliciting feedback from uh, monitors that aren't on the whitelist, the one I have, which is the yeah. Samsung UE30, whatever, whatever the hell it's called. Um, 
seem seem to work fine. Um, in a very weird Mylers way, this is absolutely a um, win for AMD. This is NVIDIA in its own special way admitting that people don't want to pay that fucking premium for your G-Sync module. Yeah. <laughs> what, you don't, you, you don't want to really drop don't. three grand on a monitor? No? Amen. Really? Nope. Not at all. Turns out you don't really want to pay a thousand pounds for a 3440 by 1440 display when you can get a 34, uh, 3860 by 21. Make up uh, some more numbers, Pedro, while we're talking about this. Uh, story. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Lutris. <laughs> what? No? Oh, not no, li- this is the Lutris. money this one. This is about NVIDIA right. stuff. Wow, Pedro, yeah. you need to retard the drinking. And <laughs> we're just in the news section. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and this is why uh, I hate Nvidia. this game this week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Nvidia stock dropped considerably, and uh, the this particular article actually comes from Market Watch. Don't worry, there'll be links in the show notes. And they say that after uh, basically they announced that they didn't quite meet their uh, projected earnings for quarter four, twenty eighteen. Their uh, stock share price kind of dropped considerably. And they don't really go into the specifics of how much. They just say, oh, yeah, NVIDIA had projected to make about $2.7 billion in profit, and they only made 2.2. But Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It, oof, poor Jen Swung. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I mean we, we just cut to the clip of Jensen just, like, crying into his already massive pile of money. Which, by, by the way, they, they call they call him Jensen, like Adam Jensen in this yeah. article. <laughs> Maybe do a double take. I had to I had to look up his name just to make sure that I wasn't spelling it wrong. No, apparently he Latinized it, so now now it is Jensen sometimes. Yeah, uh, and he actually said that uh, no, the even if the crypto market bubble pops, we won't have any issues, and we will keep. Uh, selling as many cards as we did turns out they didn't so their stock price went to shit and the article didn't specify but i actually went and had a look in october 1st 29 uh 2018 the uh nvidia stock share was worth 289 dollars that's per share and today like a couple hours ago, the market closed with each uh, NVIDIA share going for $144. That's about $145 per share less than they actually had just a couple of months ago. On top of falling short by about $500 million on their projected earnings. I Listen, yeah. everyone at home, I apologize. <laughs> I've been looking desperately for like a business ticker. To put across the bottom of the screen, I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, no, no we, we we need like the Jim Kramer yeah, mad yeah, money. That's thing, what I was looking like, for. Someone... Yeah, <laughs> and, and and I mean like yeah, shock. People aren't up to spending thousands of dollars every couple of years for new high end video cards. Hey, people voted with their wallets, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for once, it worked. <laughs> but don't I, I worry. Mean, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll see the Nvidia. Well, I guess they can't call it the thirty series because AMD cribbed that number. Maybe I don't know. We'll, we'll see going, if they actually um, release the Navis, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, Nav- ma- ma- we're ma- be maybe maybe we'll see some uh, cheaper cards in the future. NVIDIA. Well, they're definitely going to be releasing the the series of shit. We thought Navi would already be out, so we've we yeah, already the, made the these 1660 cards. TI. Yeah. <laughs> Those are coming out, um, <laughs> which are going to be some weird cards, but like nothing. That market segment is going to be covered like six to eight months before Navi even shows up. So yeah. yeah. Oops. <laughs> it's NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then you hate Lutris, right? Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Give me a minute, sweetheart. Hey, not point five, not is out. What's Lutris, man? It's kind of like a place where you can play all of your games, be it GOG, Steam, uh GOG. <laughs> Emulators, Steam, yeah. GOG. <laughs> we got a couple of things emulators, rocking GOG, out with wine. this uh, latest stuff. Uh, you got the uh, modernized the GUI. That's the thing. It looks nice. Kind of digging it. A uh, bunch of under the hood stuff. And uh, hey, we finally got that FPS limiter option. I know I've been looking for that. But if we come over to the Patreon page, go check that out. Patreon.com forward slash Lutris. Striders in chat right now. And it's like, hey man, I'm very glad to announce the release. And there's a Gang of stuff, DXVK updates, Warmastered Edition, Darksiders, and all this fun stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, 
Very proud of you, Strider. Very proud of you. So proud. So proud that I, I decided to download it and try. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Now, before we get started, I just want to throw it on your Patreon page. Maybe throw a download link for this, like in the first sentence, to let people know where to get or, it. Or, you know, a download link anywhere, because there isn't or one. Or anywhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't involve Googling, not five, not. Maybe throw that in there. Okay. I mean, I just did a get pull and a get checkout. You guys are scrubs. That's great. We're talking about scrubs, sweetheart. Yeah, that's the point. Scrubs. Anyways. It doesn't on. compute and has a little insect brain sometimes, <laughs> Pedro. Um, it's kind of one track, man. So I want to try it, man. I, I want to download it because, uh, unfortunately, Lutris.net gave it a try, but it didn't. Still got the big red warning about, you must install wine staging from, and it takes you to the wine HQ that only mentions wine staging's a thing and like a link to the GitHub repo at the bottom of the page. It's like, uh-huh. Anyway, so what did I want to do? I had a legitimate reason. I typically don't play around Lutris because I pretty much only play native games. and Except Proton ones. <laughs> wow, it's like I didn't write all that shit out in the show notes, Pedro. Do you want to fill anyone else in? No. Come on, baby. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so what I wanted to try was Darksiders 2, which just doesn't work with Proton, right? And some people have said, hey, I got it to work, but I couldn't. It goes to a title screen, then it ups the desktop. So we install this and get the PPA in, get everything together. It works. Launch that up. And uh, yeah, step one with Lutris 0.5.0 was, so you need to install it in Steam. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't, I was like, well, you got me there, game. I didn't expect that. Uh, I did that. And yeah, not a big deal. Okay. After that, Lutris was like, okay, now I see it. It's a thing. It showed up. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. And the default launcher for Darksiders 2 in Lutris was Steam, Proton. Now, we have established on multiple occasions that I'm not a clever man. However, I'm, am, I, am I wrong in this train of thought? Gentlemen, when I say if, if I'm going to be trying something from Steam on Lutris, there's probably a solid damn chance it's because it didn't work with Proton. It is, to be it, fair, there's like one slight uh, thing to that because Lutris applies the extra bits that Proton doesn't automatically do, like the Proton tricks stuff. Still didn't fucking work, Brad. All right. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I just lost my train of thought. I got distracted. <laughs> Please deliver. Uh, I, tr I tried to change it to wine, and it was like, no, uh, no file provided. I didn't have a very good experience, but it's still in beta. So we're not judging. All right. That, yeah, yeah that and a, a, lot, a lot of these my... problems have to do with the, the runners themselves, which aren't necessarily maintained by Strider. Right. They're maintained by the community. So I, I, yeah. it's, it's a bit of your mileage may vary. Um, I mean, I've been using not... Uh, 5.0 since the beta and uh, aside from the usual just like installer fuck-ups where like the actual install process will fail i haven't had too yes. many issues with the latest version of lutris um i mean witcher witcher runs fine mm -hmm. um and i even I even, I even tried my gog version of shadow warrior and that worked so yeah and actually one of the ones i keep trying every now and then is uh to get the original uh never winter nights not the enhanced edition the original one if you want to get that working that still works, and uh, if for some reason you want to play Dark Souls in Lutris, that works so much better than it actually does with Proton. That's uh, good well, Lutris Strider. brings a lot more to the table than just Proton, because again, you can do yeah. a bunch of emulators and you can bring in your GOG library. Yep. Yeah, and it, 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 actually, it actually provides a nice little indexed way to sort of handle the various either wine modifications or environment mm -hmm. modifications for all these various games, which I, which I appreciate, because... Yeah. Uh, and, and instead of having this like all over the place, it's fairly well organized. The one thing I don't like about it is that side pane with the game information. It's a little <laughs> ugly, but that's just me. Other people might like it. It's <laughs> it's a bit iTunesy, if we're being honest. Just saying. I mean, honestly, <laughs> remind me a bit of like uh, the the Windows Eight 
slash 10 explorer strider don't window thing. do I either don't one of these yahoos man i mean seriously it's like oh this window's bugging you mean it's bugging listen, you while you're listen, playing the I, game? I freely admit that this is just a minor nitpick <laughs> and it only really ever it is matters a nitpick. to me that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's just but, a but I mean, that that that, that kind of that kind of speaks to the state that Lutris is in. Where like the only real complaints are nitpicks and not being able to play yeah. Darksiders. That's that's very good. Yeah. <laughs> no, we just and the that UI both, actually both of looks these people, good. They, they take Lutris and leave it on the second monitor so they can stare at it and go, ah, oh, that window while they're playing their game. Yeah, obviously, hundred percent. All right. Yeah. Let's talk you about don't, you. Don't. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, so uh, Unity have come out with a new announcement. There's a new version out there, and it is a beta. It's the 20, uh, 2019.1 beta, and you can get it right now. You can go and download it. They have a blog post which lists most of what you can expect, with the highlight, of course, that uh, there are or there is one uh, specific uh, Linux mention in the... Uh, blog post itself but if you actually click through to the release notes there are a total of 22 um mentions and the biggest ones are like they're dropping 32-bit uh target for linux uh so you can't really export a 32-bit uh unity game for linux using this beta they're doing that uh as they say uh to basically focus on uh, actually having the functionality that they can provide from the 64-bit and improve on that as well as improve on Vulkan. And it's, that Vulkan improvement is very, very welcome because we've seen, like, Ballistic Overkill. That's an example of a game that's currently uh, using Vulkan. I think that's the one. Yeah, there's a couple more, but that's, like, the big one. And... The game, th that one specifically at least, performs about the same or slightly worse in Vulcan than, the, than it does with OpenGL. Yeah, but I think that's Talos. a very good example of a developer smashing that Vulcan button, seeing what the fuck happened. And Ballistic Overkill is yes. kind of a tricky thing to pick with because its OpenGL performance was fucking stellar to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> and yeah, we've the, kind the... of been spoiled with the Talos principle because the Talos principle ran really well right from the start. And then they introduced Vulcan and it ran even better so that's kind and, of the and, level and of then on the, on, the, on the flip side of that coin you got fusion which vulcan's a bit yeah. of a crapshoot still <laughs> but i mean i mean that 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 is an in-development thing the one thing i really appreciate here is just the whole mess of linux fixes because mm -hmm. you know unlike some engines slash stores slash companies this is a, this is something to appreciate because this is this is a company that actually supports us and maybe 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 doesn't like people using their software for cloud services but really yeah. does value the fact that they um they do they do have a sizable player base on linux most of most of the linux games available are unity based so yeah. they, they they know that they got to keep that uh keep that up to snuff i don't know i don't have a big deal with them dropping 32 bit i know i know there's going to be three people on like their pentium 4 still going like ah, i can't play <laughs> unity games anymore but here's the thing 32 bit x86 is dead stick a fork in it it's done you gotta really uh, think about it i mean unless you're intentionally just running a 32-bit linux distro uh you're not there, there's not a 32-bit only chip capable of meeting system requirements for anything i can think of yeah steam itself is still 32-bit that's like the big argument i can see some people raising and even that's not like a game <laughs> Yeah, Steam, Steam is not a game and has to support Windows XP because of China. Oh, no, they dropped support for XP. Oh, yeah, that's true. They, yeah. they already dropped support and they're dropping Vista soonish. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. damn. Hey, time. something that you probably can play on your 32 bit CPU. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you, you can. You need, you need a fairly new version of uh, QT if you want to use the package, though. This is Cross UO. Um, it is a, the quote unquote true open source Ultima Online client. You know, people were big into the Ultima Online back in the 90s. I, 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 I kind of missed that. I had friends who were doing it, but I couldn't convince my parents to A, pay for an inter internet connection, and B, pay for an online subscription to an MMO. Um, but it's available for download. It consists of uh, three components, the launcher, the uh, assistant, and then there's an additional library. Um, you can download the uh, 
you can download it straight uh, from the site if you're using Manjaro or uh, mm-hmm. Ubuntu 1604. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to build it from source. You're going to have to, and it's like I said, it's spread out across three projects. So you're going to have to check all of those out. I tried, I tried out uh, trying to use the uh, Manjaro version on Fedora 28, but um, Fedora 28 ships with Qt 511, and these guys depend on Qt 512. Anyways, uh, if, if you compile it, it's not, it's not going to be an issue. Um, and yeah, you can play some Ultima online and go murder Lord British and then send some pictures <laughs> of it fly to, to the moon Richard Garrett. and hang out at the International Space Station. That'll be a thing. Yeah. Uh, it, that game just won't die, man. I mean, that it, it's impressive. Every time it's like, oh, I remember that. Wait, whoa, people are still actively playing Ultima online. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. B- b- between, between this, Evercrack and Ragnarok, and as Runescape. Pedro mentioned, Run, run Escape. Um, <laughs> We're yeah. going to get our open source... Uh, Ever crack client. Don't we already? Yeah. Have I mean, there was a launcher. There was an open source launcher, not like uh, that, a that, 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 open that, source. That might, that might be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, uh, um, not a complete yeah. uh, engineering implementation type of thing. I but, think. I, I mean, I kind of want that. Ever Evercrack was the first time I'd ever lost a friend to a video game. Mm. Yeah, World but of like, Warcraft, um, but like I was saying, the, the, this kind of stuff <laughs> is important, especially for preserving MMOs, because once the servers die, these games disappear. Um, and a lot of people have a lot of good memories attached to them. A lot of them just like playing the game mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they want a way to continue playing it. And so game preservation projects like this are hyper important, especially for the MMO space. Like uh, Bl- Blizzard has just clued in that people are willing to pay money to them to play an older version of their games. Damn so. it. <laughs> <laughs> have they even rolled that out yet after no, shutting it coming. down? No. Like, oh no, it's totally yeah. coming, you guys. And yeah. a year later, oh, right around the corner, uh, the, the, but we the, sure the, shut the down that is out. My, 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 um, buddy, my buddy Anthony was playing it, and he was like, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dun, 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 dun. The Legend of Zelda. Total conversion. Why are we talking about this? It's because it's for GZ Doom, motherfuckers. That's why we're talking about it. Yeah. yeah. What the actual hot hell? They went ahead and um, made interesting use of the Doom. And it was like, you know what? That would kind of work. You know, it, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it would it, kind it's, it's of work. It's a bit ish yeah, it would kind of work if Nintendo's lawyers didn't go. Uh, oh, no, man. you don't. <laughs> well, I, I mean, definitely, definitely using that art is a no-no. Um, yeah, <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb experiments like these are fun. I, like uh, the the one that redoes uh, Half Life, but instead you're playing Spyro the Dragon. It's an interest. It's an interesting experiment to see how well you understand the underlying mechanics of the games and how well you can fuck with it. Um, yeah. I will say that it kind of does a little bit of an unintentional Minecraft. It looks a, it looks a little bit like that. Yeah. But also, I mean, that's kind of it's kind of the point of voxels is they're pixel they're three D pixels, right? So I, I I put that down in the show notes and I thought to myself, wait a second, you extrapolate <laughs> to three D. That's what it looks like. God damn it, Jordan! Yep. Why you gotta be so stupid? There we go. Yeah, no, it's uh, if they can get away with not using the actual sprites and not making it making it look anything like the actual Zelda, yeah, that could be an interesting thing. You know, usually like right up until you do a point release or it gets popular, Nintendo pretty much just lets you do what you want. With yeah, it. it's the moment mm-hmm. it gets popular, and this has already been featured in quite a few websites, and now we're talking about it, no, and not. someone so, else is going to talk about it. Yeah. So, 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 so rip <laughs> Zelda TC is all I'm saying. <laughs> Have you yeah, ever... Yeah, download it now before they actually DMCA it. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> um, and don't make anything too recent. Uh, I've never completed the original Legend of Zelda. I did Zelda too? Yeah, that I. That was my jam. I, I never had a NES, so I never actually played the original Legend of Zelda except on an emulator. Were you too young? Oh I no, I wasn't too young. My parents were just very house. anti-video game. <laughs> well, like the NES was I... ten years old when you were born. Yeah. And like people, my friends still had it. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, <laughs> Julius. Um. So. Maybe, maybe maybe you like uh, maybe you like city builder games. Maybe you like Romans or things associated with them. Maybe maybe you like Caesar Three, the uh, video game. Well, mm-hmm. now you can finally play it under Linux with an open source engine reimplementation. Um, you can actually pick the game up for about seven bucks on Steam. Um, and this is basically just a binary replacement. You build it. Uh, you drop it into the. Uh, it requires a SDL2, SDL2 mixer. Uh, you build it, you come up, it spits out the Julius executable, you drop it into the game folder, and away you go. Um, yep. And that, that's pretty much it. It's, it's, um, 
yeah, uh, it, it's it's another one of these Civ 4X style games that came out in the in 1999. Um, clear, clearly, there's enough of a fan base that um, it's or at not least exactly this guy was a big enough Civ type of no, situation. It's, it's, uh, Caesar was always its own thing. It it's just about growing a city. That's it. You don't really so, have any like external conflict. You don't have to no, expand but, 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 in the traditional still, RTS like, sense. like the diplomacy element and like that yes. that, that, that stuff is that stuff is still there. Do you so, know it's who? A bit I, of a it's I mean, not like four X. It's two X. No. <laughs> Listen, man. Do you know who <laughs> looks really really news. love the Romans? <laughs> you ever, hey, Ben, you ever been to a Turkish prison? Volcanoes. Ah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, um, but it, it's good to see another one of these the engineering plague. implementations, uh, especially for a game that does not have a Linux client. I was going to say uh, the plague, cool. but I thought Volcanoes did more damage than the plague. Did. Oh, oh, you could have said Visigoths. I could have went that way. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ostro- yeah. Ostrogoths, Visigoths, the Mongols. Mongols. The um, Lusitans. Yeah, the, just the, about the, every the, barbarian the, 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 tribe. The Phoenicians. <laughs> yeah, it turns, it, turns, it turns out Rome had quite a few enemies. Haters gonna hate, yeah. man. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> All right. Well, you can see you can see us hating on Romans in the next segment. Um, God damn it! I had a goof for this, but I completely <laughs> forgot about it. Chairquisitions coming up next. And remember, don't hate the Portugamer, gamer. Just hate the Portugamer. game. Uh, this week we're taking a look at um, Mage's Initiation: Reign of the Elements. Um, this part of the show is what we call the Chairquisition. It's where we review games. We take games. We tell you if I they like launch, how you just do it they... out of order every now and then to throw me off. It's awesome. I know, right? <laughs> uh, we, we we tell you if it launch, how the, how it performs, the graphical fidelity, and the control responsiveness and just general usability. We rate that on a pass fail of one to zero chairs, and then we give you a scale on a scale from one to four chairs, whether or not we liked said game. Um, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, this week we're doing Mage's Initiation, Reign of the Elements uh, by Himalaya Studios on the Adventure Game Studio engine. You can pick it up for about 15 US. And what is it? Join John Dark on a perilous journey across a medieval styled land of Ignore. Ign- ignore? Ignore. Ignore me. Uh, and to send me on the lofty mountains, uh, where to, where the mysterious and hostile Flyterians dwell, suspicious of all outsiders. It's time really for dark spent to some himself. brain time with these names, man. That, well, I mean, it's it's this it's the standard like fantasy. We got to come up, we got to cobble syllables together to make a unique sounding name. Okay. That's why all my characters are named Bob or Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's let's start this nonsense. <laughs> then, how did how did this thing run? I know you had some problems. No, man, this thing was brilliant. Um, more than that in the fun section. Uh, you know, it launches somewhere. You know, both of you experienced this. I did this on 1804 LTS. It's the thing. Um, with the UHD, what I have here is I have a UHD monitor, I have a 1080p monitor, and I have like an ultra wide in uh, programmer mode, whatever you want to call that. It launches kind of like in the bottom right hand corner of the UHD screen and a little bit on the 1080 side in a window. That is neither the resolution of either of those monitors. Therefore, you can't really get to anything. But there's a way to launch it full screen, which also basically launches in that same spot where you can't get to anything to change or modify anything. And Pedro Jordan will tell you why it wouldn't matter even if you could. So, yeah, fuck that noise. Uh, Proton came to the rescue because I was determined to play it. Thank you, Valve, for making that an option, because lo and fuck mothering behold, uh, the Proton version has an option to adjust shit like that. And said shit was adjusted, launched at full screen. I gave it a play. Uh, performance uh, kind of locked at a very random 45 frames per second. Graphics, it's legit. It looks old school, man. I mean, you got to give them some love for that. Some work went into the backgrounds. It's not lazily done at all. Controls, believe it or not, this... It took me a minute. I wish I had found out like 20 minutes earlier. Was shift to run. It's brilliant. You don't have to mm-hmm. point and click all the things. I was so happy about that. But if you got this and you're trying to run it with multi monitor setup, there's a very good chance that you're going to have to return it or play it with Proton. I mean, solid strikes across the board on that, man. Well, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit uh, with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, yeah, you have to play it in windowed mode. When you launch the game, it says play with OpenGL in windowed mode or play in OpenGL with full screen mode. You got to pick that. Um, you got to pick that windowed mode. It does. If you do full screen, it does the thing where it'll pick one of your monitors and 
if if you're like me and you have two UHD monitors, it'll try to do 7680 by 2160, but it will only mm-hmm. do that on half a screen, and so most of the menu is obscured. So playing uh, playing it in windowed mode will cause it to spawn on the bottom quarter of your screen, but you can at least drag it to a proper place. And I dragged it onto the uh, the FreeSync monitor just to test test out if that was gonna do anything. Oh man, tell me about it. Did FreeSync? <laughs> oh, it, bl- it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll get I'll get into that hot, in a hot second. Low. So I, I did a bit of research just because I've, I figured maybe there's like a config file or a prefs or something. And lo and behold, there is an actual readme that explains that the Linux and OS 10 versions have this exact issue, and that there is a way to fix it. Uh, unfortunately, that option is unavailable because you can't click on it because it's mm-hmm. rendered on somewhere else on the screen. Uh, what you can do though is the readme does tell you the location of the game's configuration file which it is there, but it's entirely empty and it doesn't give you the specific configuration directives you need in order to play the game properly at full screen. And I assume it would actually work if you had those directives. And if someone, and I figured, you know what, maybe I could try piecing it together. So I looked at the Windows configuration file that ships with the game, didn't have that specific option, at which point I gave up because I this is 2019 and I shouldn't have to work to get my games running anymore. That's why we have Lutris. That's why we have Proton. That's why we have Steam. So yeah. I played it in a windowed mode forevermore. Yeah, and um, played it on a window on a, on my FreeSync monitor, and man, that refresh rate was was steady for the, that rock rocking that forty six frames a second, man. Um, graphically, yeah, it looks like a fucking King's Quest game. It looks and feels mm-hmm. and sounds like a King's Quest game. All all the the voice acting and the dialogue, it really really does an excellent job of capturing of capturing the aesthetic of that era. And I, I was actually pretty impressed with that. Um, control wise, though, uh, yeah, you can you can do it, it supports a couple different control modes. You can use was you can click. Um, the one problem I had was in windowed mode, the acceleration on the cursor is just so fucked up that like you will overshoot and undershoot stuff all the time. It's so annoying. Uh, and ugh. so I'll, I'll ding a chair for the desert launch and the controls. Does fine on performance and graphics. It gets two out of four for me. Yeah, and over here, it launches well enough in windowed mode. Uh, it, you don't really get an option to set the resolution in windowed mode, which is why the top of what you're watching right now is a bit cropped off, because it is a 3 by 2 resolution. It's not even 4 by 3 it's 3 by 2 uh, I don't know why they picked that specific resolution, but it's it's actually really annoying. Uh, the you don't uh, if you try to play it in f- uh, full screen mode, like Ven already mentioned, it's uh, it, it appears three quarters of the way of what you actually see, and the last quarter is completely chopped off. At least. That's what happened with all of us. Uh, performance at 1080. Uh, the, uh, well, I guess 46 FPS is the most you're getting. I don't know what kind of uh, target they had for that specific frame rate, but there you it's go. Mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the graphics, it's a 2D point and click adventure game. Um, it would have been handy to have a few more resolution options, but hey. That's that's what you're getting. Uh, the controls, the mouse movement is a bit off, but it's nowhere near as bad as it originally was because originally uh, the game just used the default adventure game studio settings, um, which it only takes five x11 inputs per second. So it's like having a mouse that only works at five hertz on the polling rate. It's bad. It was really bad. I actually sent them an email. It's like, yeah, here's the patch. Just fix that. And they fixed it, but they didn't actually correct the mass acceleration to work as it's supposed to. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets two chairs. All right. Well, there you go. It has it has some functional problems yeah. that really that really detract from the experience. But did you have fun, Ven, playing it in Proton regardless? Oh, look at it. How could you possibly not have fun with this juggernaut, you know? <clears throat> Over 10 years uh, in the works, this game, uh, they oh, managed to do this with $125,000 on a Kickstarter. Uh, when you look at the quality of the game, outside of its ability to run, uh, on mm-hmm. Linux anyway, it... It's well done. 
a lot of work went into this. Uh, we get something that's basically a quest for glorious point and clicker, man. You know, you got to collect three things, three MacGuffins, because of reasons, the game. It's point and click, even though you can run. I like that. It's got a bunch of dialogue to slog through. You're expecting this, though, if this is your jam. A lot of backtracking. Kind of a clunky interface, but you get to choose from like three different individual clunky interfaces. Good on that. And you, as is tradition, you have a character that kind of walks on the backdrop. It's not really in it. Kind of throws you back to the King Quest days. But as I said earlier, you can at least control the character with WASD and it shift to run. Thank you. That was so cool. I was so happy when I found that and I just started running everywhere. Combat, it exists. It's point and clicky. Nothing wrong with that. Because this is absolutely a 100% faithful to the games of old, even down to having to dick with config files in an effort to make the fucker work. Mm -hmm. However, the thing is, Brad, I don't miss any of that. I don't miss the old days. I don't personally. You know, Himalaya Studios, you did a great job. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not being facetious when I say this. You did a great job recreating the DOS ages. But those are not times I personally look back on with any kindness whatsoever. I'm going to say this is, this transcends retro. This is retro to a fault. It encapsulates, if you love this stuff, you know, they say never meet your heroes. And I, I think sometimes when you see a game that is, you know, an older game, that they'll, they'll take that. Update some of the mechanics, you know, put a little polish on it because you don't want the exact carbon copy of what you dealt with because it's not necessarily as good as you remember. This is going to give you that authentic experience. So, you know, Mage's Initiation, if you're looking for that, this will deliver. It's reasonably priced at $14.99 too. You know, when you see something like this, I wouldn't have been shocked if this was, you know, 40 or 50 bucks. That's not out of the way. And that's the, uh, that's our uh, blacksmith that grunts. Pretty much mm -hmm. all. That's all you can get from them. So, yeah, this is not my jam, but it's a well done game. It, you know, I'm giving one share, but that's just me. What do I know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, honestly, Retro to a Fault is a fairly good synopsis for my opinion on this game. Yes. And I mean, like, it definitely goes out of its way to make itself feel like a Sierra style adventure or King's Quest game. And it, it succeeds to that 100%. Um, However, the thing with King's Quest, though, is that it, it originally started off as like a basic text parser and then gradually expanded and uh, taking advantage of the new technology and new tools that were available to it and eventually became something resembling a fairly modern game. And it would leave those sort of anachronistic gameplay elements in the past. And I think that's where the gameplay falls the shortest, because like, honestly, the, the best nostalgia driven remake of a game I think I've ever played was Pokemon Soul Silver because it took what was good about the original game and updated it. It 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 applied a modern design ethos to the game to to the to the original skeleton of the game and it worked wonders. Um and you know those those of us who played older games had to suffer through it due to technical limitations and this can alienate new players. And like Thim Thimbleweed Park is another one that does a good job about this. But beyond that if you don't like King's Quest, and I wasn't really a King's Quest fan, I like watching people. I liked watching people play King's Quest after having have, and watching them beat it because Do, then I didn't have to go through all the pain of like calling the Sierra hotline and talking to everyone and taking notes <laughs> and you drawing think maps. Your opinion of this game might change if there was a random clown walking about screaming obscenities. Mm. That would have improved it. Hey, we, and, yeah. hey, we did get the guy with the uh, no pants in the uh, pub. This, yes, this, this is true. Right here. Um, that one. <laughs> I, I, dicked, I dicked around a lot in like the forest and the areas, like killing goblins and stuff. That, that was where I spent most of my time. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the combat is very much, it's, is very anachronistic, right? Like this, this is how a, you would do sort of this sort of game in the DOS era. But mm -hmm. we don't live in the DOS era anymore. We live in 2019. Um, and the, the mouse acceleration doesn't do it any favors. Um, and you know, when you play games through DOS boss or box or scum or anything like that, then, you know, you, you don't slow my mouse down to a crawl or, you know, allows me to adjust the screen resolution. The game, the game itself is, is fine, right? It's just that King's quest was never really my jam. And I, th I think for like people who are super into King's quest, quest for glory, space quest, that sort of stuff, they will, they will really get something out of this. But for me, it didn't, it didn't really do much. I'll give it, I'll give it one share. Yeah. And 
Jordan already mentioned the combat system. I can safely say I'm not a fan, uh, but, you know, since this is a point-and-click adventure, I feel like maybe a turn-based combat system would have been better. Maybe something like the old Might and Magic series uh, did. Uh, here, what you get in Mage's Initiation is a real-time combat where you have to walk around with the waz or the arrow keys, or you click around with the mouse. Good luck with that. Uh, and you have to shoot the spells at the things until they drop dead. It it feels a little bit out of place. Outside of combat, though, I think this could very well be a nice retro hipster point-and-click adventure game. It certainly does have the Sierra King's Quest style going for it, as Jordan already mentioned, and that's a very good place to be, and I guess that's what they were going for, because they freaking nailed it. The dialogue isn't terrible, and the voice acting is just slightly stilted which is exactly the kind of voice acting that you used to get back in the day slightly less tinny slightly less compressed but yeah it 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 is exactly the same level of voice acting that you used to get i just wish that they would have sorted out how to full screen how to adjust the mouse uh, sensitivity how technical issues basically if they had sorted the technical issues this could actually could have been a very nice 2d point and click adventure as it stands, it's a two-chair meh all the way through. Yeah, so th so there you go. Um, if if you play if you play a lot of King's Quest back in the day, like like I said, this this will this will probably be a great little nostalgia trip. Um, but I mean, mo yeah, modern I think that's modern really the only warning I would put on it is this is legit. And like I said, I'm not faulting the studio for like sticking to mm -hmm. like genuinely bringing that experience to something that you can kind of play on a modern system but just be warned this is this is legit and you can say that as a positive like hard thing or you can say if that you is like a, that yeah yeah yep. yeah re 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 like i said retro like or what ben said retro to a fault is the perfect synopsis for this game and yep. hey man three wizards just g gave you a thing now jordan fix the ship so we can get the fuck off this planet all right coming up next uh, we 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 talk we talk about speeds and Visual Studio. <laughs> Spoilers, jeez. And it's about time we put a bow on this one. I'm hate man. Yes, <laughs> it's the hate mail. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, by all means, we'd love to read all about that hate that you have stored deep within your. Intestines, I guess. Uh, you can go to listgamecast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill out the form. Just make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little uh, drop down box, and that's uh, that's all you need to do, really. There's not even a captcha anymore. So uh, we do have a little bit about uh, you. Um, you know, if you are a game developer or you're starting a Kickstarter for a game of any sort, and you'd like us to talk about it, we do have a couple of rules that you need to follow. The rules are want us to... meant to be broken. Yeah, and a lot of developers seem to think that those rules don't apply to them, but this week we actually have one developer that uh, actually followed the thing. Hey, but I do that... want to throw a couple of tips out there, though, man. Uh, did, uh, developer, That same developer, else, it was like a big, long thing. Uh, yeah. If you're just trying to copy pasta your press release into the hate mail section, spam's gonna bounce it just mm. yeah. pro tip i mean write a message be like hey here's a link to a thing but if you got like here's a link to artwork screenshots and all that be like mm, looking a little spammy there brad yeah but that's before, not the first story the first story yeah, is actually that. about speed yeah uh, this is from mike g and he said he sent this to us over uh, twitter and he says tried to listen to a linux gamecast with trim silence turned on to minimize the pauses in the discussion not recommended was emotionally scarred by how fast the Linux hashtag Linux comes out. The show needs to be savored in its original glory, gory glory. <laughs> so you 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 responded to them then? Uh, what we had like two seconds of like actual silence in the in the waveform or something? One one second. Yes, Jordan, I did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, Ivan's doing I, a thing I, right now. I, I, if you're not I, I watching agree. the video version, you should be. <laughs> Pedro's yeah, just I, fucking I, 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 up. He just walks and just piss all, all over the bit. And you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was tempted to try it out, but then I thought better of it because I hate the sound of my own voice. Um, do you, I, I, do you I, I don't guys know, even do that? Did you, did you play around with this at all? Uh, like the, the, the silence trim? Oh, you do not want to do anything. Like one of our shows, you don't want to listen with silence trim on simply because we're just like, do, 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 do. Because uh, that's, I haven't been able to beat many things in either of you, but we're pretty good at that. We're pretty good at no <laughs> dead air because that was beaten into me, and I'm passing on that bad habit. Of yeah, yeah. it fucks, I mean, it fucks it up is... my personal and professional life too. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a podcast. You're supposed to keep people engaged. And, well, no, not know. necessarily. The whole thing is like, oh, it's a natural flowing conversation. I'm like, I'm from radio, motherfuckers. Fuck that. Come on, punch it up, punch it up. Um, the... Okay, so let's punch it. Falco, he's got a bit of a thing about punk it's... points. All right, fine. I guess we're done with that, Mike. Sorry, I was going to say some more stuff to you, but Pedro's not having it. He's in a hurry to get some food and go to bed. Look, this was <laughs> this was about not having any dead air. So he says, hi, LGC team. First off, I feel the need to reply to your uh, very stern advice to read your contact page well. I did, and I do have a working Linux build. I do have a free demo to download, so I hope I'm safe. That you are. I'm Falco von Falkner, the founder of Insert Disc 22. We are close to launching the Kickstarter campaign of our upcoming game, Born Punk. Born Punk is a classic point-and-click adventure game. Oh, I wonder where I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, we threw chairs at it this week. Uh, uh, the um, <clears throat> About a corporate... Uh, combat hacker getting uh, getting infected with a mysterious rogue AI that starts taking over her brain. It focuses heavily on choices and consequences, something that is barely seen in the genre. Really? Have you played? Never mind. Uh, we're proud to be featuring a strong female protagonist, as well as music by Wildstar and World of Warcraft composer Jeff Kurtnacker. I think I got that right. Falco. So, yeah, it's a new game. It's on Kickstarter. They do have a demo. It's available on Itch. There will be links in the show notes, of course. Uh, you can just go and download it. I guess that's Falco right there. And it's got... You, okay, having World of Warcraft composer Jeff Kurt Decker uh, <laughs> uh, is... Uh, putting a big name on it i guess I, I, I guess maybe we should apologize for pitcher being schnock massively drunk yeah yes. there, there's that man for i yes. want to say good here i'm gonna go ahead and, there's a copy to the demo i took the pepsi challenge with it and the best i could tell i saw some dot vs files i was like wait a minute is that visionary studio which i believe it was and uh <clears throat> no permissions and a zip file so i'm gonna say pro tip uh First of all, thanks for sending this our way and going out of your way to get a hold to us because we do enjoy anybody who's going to take the time to work with Linux and we wish you the best of luck in your Kickstarter. We threw it in because it would be until after the launch of your Kickstarter next week if we had mentioned it next week. So we wanted to give you the push on that. Uh, CHMod, the little run thing, and it just ate a dick looking for little baby Kodak. Wasn't having it. Yeah, uh, you, you also had to... You had to chmod x the startup script and you also have to do the viz player thing mm -hmm. and when i played it it did the it tried to it tried to take up both of my monitors <laughs> that 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 was that was fun and then it crashed uh mm. they, they do actually they do actually say that this is the first time these guys are actually working with linux mm -hmm. so they appreciate any feedback um you know good good on you for stepping out on a limb for uh supporting uh linux yep. yeah not yeah. not many developers do it I, I would i would just say i would implore you Please don't half-ass it, and please don't come back to us in a year saying we got to drop Linux support because we can't maintain it. Oh, yeah. yeah, that'd be kind of a dick move. It's kind yes. of a thing. Uh, this is going to launch fifth of February, so go check it out. All these links will be in our show notes, including the demo, so you can try it mm -hmm. yourself. Report, send us some feedback. Let us know if it worked for you. Because... Send them some feedback. No, send us feedback. Game. Our feedback. <laughs> Sars. Nom, 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 nom. Yum, yum, yum. All right. On that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, where we're hanging out, talking smack, and thinking about buying Pedro things so he can kill himself. Uh, I mean, uh, 
easy to get himself. to work more easy. Uh, yes. That, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a ticket. We'll dance with that. Um, you can find me at Vince Stone on Twitter. I'm there. I'll have a conversation with you. Best place to get a hold to me is in Discord. We actually hang out in there the other six days a week, and we're actually in there. You know, we're not like the, uh, hey, we have a chat room that we're never in. We're always in there. It's terrifying. I'm Jordan Spunk. I finally remembered the joke that I was going to say about um, the the game we're reviewing, and it was a reference to the 2,000-year-old men, the Mel Brooks sketch. And I have the memory of the 2,000-year-old men. That's why I couldn't remember. You can find me forgetting things constantly at the Burning Fool on Twitter, at Frojo on our Mastodon, at mass.linuxgamecast.com, or plus Jordan Spunk on Google Plus for the next two months before it dies in a fire. <laughs> Yeah, April 2nd, according to Google, uh, it was a nice run, Google+. Plus. It was indeed a nice run. If you want to get a hold of me, you can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter. That's probably the place where I'll be looking the most. The the, the Mastodon thing, yes, it's at Unaccounted4 there as well. I don't go there very often, if I'm honest. I, I, I just don't. Sorry. And mm. Maybe you, you would if like we, we sent you a free little hotel bottle of booze every time you clicked on it. Or a hoverboard. Or See, both. I am susceptible to bribery, so I, that could be a thing. I mean, if it's icy and if you get sloshed and you have a hoverboard, then how many pagers do we get? You yeah. get all of them. I mean, what, what, what if I tell you that I'll give you your teeth back if you do it? <laughs> I'm not missing any teeth. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Roll Pro- them credits. <laughs>